Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center and today I wanted to talk about when do you add a hide box. These are great, we're going to talk all about it. We're also going to showcase some of our rabbits if you stay tuned all the way to the end of the video. Here we go. Okay, well never mind all the compacted manure that's on top of this thing. Uh, sorry, I just pulled it right out of a cage for the video. Um, but your rabbits will chew on this. See, this serves a couple different purposes. For one, rabbits are just like ostriches. They stick their head in the ground or they stick their head in the corner. They don't stick their head in the ground, but they don't look at what bothers them. And it, out of sight, out of mind, makes them feel better. Rabbits. You know, they're nervous nillies, you know, since the beginning of time, they've been prey animals. From the ground and the sky, predators are trying to get them, you know, I mean, that's why rabbits are here, they're here to feed the wild, they're here to feed the, the world, they're nervous. And when you're raising rabbits and you're providing rabbits for other, other people, you're making reservations, uh, you want your rabbits to be in perfect health, you don't want them to be nervous wrecks. Uh, to the point where they start to get aggressive and maybe bitey, that'd be worst case scenario. You know, I mean, that's rare, but it, it can happen. And a hide box, a little hide box like this, works great. It's an immediate sense of security for your rabbits. And we have all different kinds. Now, these are our little ones. We make these little ones with one by fours. And uh, so you'll just go all the way around, you know, just like we make our nesting boxes 18 inches long. Uh, it's going to be 10 inches wide, and then we make these little cutout doors. Sometimes we have uh, doors that are on a hinge so they can push their way out, and then we bevel the edge. And we put those in right at three weeks. So really, our let me grab our nesting box. So here's a nesting box. This is our design. We use our kindling totes. Once the kits are about two weeks old, well, oh, wind. Let me wait for the wind. Roxy, you eating rabbit poop again? She rolled around in something disgusting yesterday, so I had to take her collar off and wash her collar. And, and uh, she's a little rascal. I mean, she just leaps at anything dead to roll in so she can claim it. I know it took me a long time to answer that question, but three weeks is when we start to use these little hide boxes, and we will only use them for about two to three weeks. And then we'll swap them out for the bigger hide box. Now, if you'd like to see how we build our small hide boxes, you can watch that video, uh, that link that's at the beginning of the video, or you can get down in the description below, and you'll, we'll leave a link to the video there. Uh, just let me know down in the comments below if you'd like me to make a new video on how to make the smaller hide box. Uh, oh, good coffee, good beautiful day. Finally some nice weather. It's been raining for about five days and it looks like we're gonna have one day and then it's gonna go back to rain for about five days. But the temperatures are finally warming up. Uh, this year we have some agouti rabbits and uh, we'll still have our blues. We're going to have red rabbits this year. We still have our white rabbits with blue eyes. And, and I just wanted to show you what those look like. Uh, we'll go over that and uh, I'm going to be installing a kindling tote today. There was one that's just about five, five years old and wanted to, to get it be. I wanted to get it out of there before it starts to leak. And uh, so I'll show you how easy that is today. Stay with us. Here we go.
used to doing the chores around here all by myself. Um, running the rabbitry and the apiary, there's always something to do. And then we heat our home with wood, so in April we split about five full cords of wood. And those guys are just, they're out living their lives. And, and my oldest son, Cameron, moved out last year. And a short time later, his younger brother, Brandon, moved out. And uh, those guys have always been such a big help around here. So that's taking some getting used to. So today I wanted to get into the rabbits and show you, uh, you know, a terrific way to showcase your rabbits is YouTube. You know, you can take pictures and put that on Facebook and stuff, but Facebook has some guidelines as far as you can't sell any type of livestock or animals on there. So you kind of have to be a little sneaky about it. You still can show what you have uh, in YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that social media stuff is terrific for showcasing your rabbits and everybody should do that. It takes a lot of time, but it's worth it. You know, everybody should uh, entertain some way of marketing your rabbits. So today, shameless plug, I'm going to show you uh, what we have available. This year we, we brought our Agouti rabbits back, uh, not Ugati. We'll, have, we'll still have our red rabbits, we have our white rabbits with blue eyes, and I wanted to show you what those look like. They're a little bit more expensive than our regular rabbits, only because it took a little bit more time to produce those, but uh, beautiful rabbits, and we'll show you that today. Here we go. Blue-eyed white rabbits. If we can get a good view of that. She's being so tough. And I picked her up, and she just started squealing. She was so scared, so. She comes from a small litter, she only had a couple. Her mama is a first time mama, so. But these rabbits are so pretty. They're not your typical red-eyed rabbit. And these are a little bit more, these are a little bit more than our regular rabbits, about $15 more, but uh, they're really pretty. White rabbits don't normally come with blue eyes. We had one of these years ago, and they make such good looking rabbits. I actually contacted a, a previous customer. There was a rabbit that he wanted, and I wanted one of these chestnut agoutis back. Because when you get yourself a chestnut agouti and breed it with different rabbits, the agouti gene will do different things to that color. And her mom produced so well that we wanted, we wanted one of her daughters, because uh, she died suddenly. And you know what, I tell you what, she is just a spitting image of her mom. Her first litter was nine kits, and she took care of all of them. And uh, I'll try to get some video today so you can see them. I'll probably play some video as we're talking right now, and we'll show you her litter. But just such gorgeous, just such gorgeous rabbits. And uh, you, it's really fun to see what the, the color genetics will do. Um, you know, if you breed two rabbits, you're gonna get the same results over and over again because based on their color genetics when they match up it's going to either be 25 percent of this or 75 percent of that so it's always fun to test breed and see what you'll get but these are our chestnut agoutis and the agouti gene is dominant in every series and it will it'll hide um, or it'll control every locus so but these are just gorgeous rabbits and this is the this is the natural rabbit color so that's why you'll see wild, wild rabbits will have this color because it's the most dominant. Chestnut agoutis. If you're looking for black rabbits and you don't mind a crossbred rabbit, when we, when we crossbreed our California rabbits with our white rabbits, we get black rabbits. And so from time to time, we will have beautiful black rabbits, and these things look like little bear cubs. This one's a little wiggler. Sheesh. This one's got a little hair on it. But these things are so pretty. This reminds me of my black lab. When, when our black lab was little, it looked like a little bear cub.
If you guys are looking for red rabbits, we have red rabbits as well. So it doesn't matter what color you use. When it comes to New Zealand, all of them work we great. We no longer sell California rabbits. Um, they just didn't do well around here. You know, they may do well up north in the, the Upper Peninsula, maybe down in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, but uh, not around, not around here anyway. We didn't sell very many, we, very few sales. So, but we did keep our California rabbits for crossbreeding for hybrid vigor. So we're, that's our own production is our Californians and New Zealands. You know, if you're looking for a production for the freezer, crossbreeding, it's not the best for sales, but you're always still able to sell those rabbits that are pets using your crossbreeding program. You know, somebody who isn't interested in a pedigree or showing their rabbit, you don't have to process the entire litter. You can sell a couple and supplement your feed costs, maybe purchase some more lumber to add on or whatever the heck. Those are our red brokens. That's actually that blue, that blue eyed white. This is its sibling. We'll see what it is. See if it's a boy or a girl. This is a girl, Mama Doe. These are getting bigger now. And they're really pretty. You know, New Zealands are all pretty easy to handle. Once in a while, you'll get an extra spooky one. But most of the time they're really sweet. You know, they just get a little nuts when they breed and uh, you know, sometimes the bucks will get a, a little aggressive, over aggressive. Sometimes the does will get bitey. But these are our blue rabbits and most of the rabbits are all sweet. You know, it's not like, you know, if you're looking for a pet and sometimes the bucks, the bucks tend to be more uh, stress-free, better pets. Not to say you can't find a good doe, but that's my experience. The bucks tend to make better pets. Start with the traditional red-eyed white. And these rabbits are great. You know, they're, they're just a terrific go-to rabbit. But what happens is, you know, it's fun to mix it up and, and have different colors and you know, sometimes folks look at these rabbits and they don't like that, that red eye. But these are sweet little rabbits. And, you know, New Zealand's have terrific grow outs. They're easy to handle. They're a medium sized rabbit. So once they get to be about 10 to 12 weeks, if you're gonna process, they are, they're pretty good size. Good meat to bone ratio but we do still have traditional red-eyed whites. So if you like rabbit videos and you'd like to watch more videos that will help you with your rabbitry, be sure to click subscribe and the bell. Um, that's what our channel specializes in. So I'd like to talk briefly about marketing your rabbits. You know, I think it's really important that you pick some sort of social media platform, uh, Instagram, Facebook, what, whatever. Uh, I like YouTube because you can explain a little bit more about whatever you're talking about. Not a lot. I know some folks don't like having people over. They don't like having to have a friend or, or a family member go meet somebody in a public place somewhere it's just so they're not nervous about the whole thing. You know, some folks are just not interested in that and they just want a production. I understand that. But if you're maybe interested in getting your rabbitry to pay for itself, no more buying feed, no more worrying about pellet costs because, I mean, pellet costs just keeps going up and up and up. I think when we started doing a rabbitry, it was like $12 for a 50 pound bag. Also stay tuned this summer, we're gonna do several videos on how to feed your rabbits uh, from your property. Being able to supplement your food costs and maybe ex uh, you're expanding the rabbitry, cages, things like that. Selling a few rabbits every month it gets easier the longer your rabbitry is up and running and once you start with some sort of social media platform. 